jumping around the notes. So, yeah, okay, questions. What do you do when you don't when you're not playing guitar? When I'm not playing guitar? Yeah, what do you do? What do I do? I put out forest fires. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Virtual sense. Um, when I am not playing guitar, I am doing 95% other things that make it possible to play guitar. That means that I'm negotiating contracts, I'm working on itineraries, I am, uh, I mean, just I'm doing 20 people's jobs and taking the other 10 people that are doing their jobs and stamping out their fires that they start. And yeah, so I'm being a manager, a publisher, a publicist, a Production guy, an itinerary coordinator, and a lawyer, uh, all of that stuff. And it takes all of that to be able to do this. That's what it takes. So, it's good to get that stuff down. You have to know how to get out of a bad contract. Do you, you also teach? Yes, of course. Um, that is, I mean, that, that's, that is making music in a sense. Teaching is I'll explain. Um, you know, think about why you play music. What is it? It's like somebody gave this to you. Somebody's making music, and it makes you feel so damn good. And all you want to do is just tell the world about it and share it with them. You learn how to do it, and you do it back, and, and then inspires other people, and they do it. Well, the same thing of that is, is when somebody teaches you how to make the music. And then you pay that forward, you share that, you teach other people how to make the music, you inspire them that way. You go out and see them do it, and then they're teaching someone else, and it's the same thing. So really, teaching music is a part of making music. You know, it's not just giving people the music, it's also showing them how so that they can do it too. That's a very big part of it, it's the most valuable part of it, really. You know, a show, whatever. You know, it's, you play and it's done. And it's on YouTube, and everyone, you know, ranks on it. And, but, but, you know, if you're teaching somebody how to do that, how to make music for themselves, and, and go on, and it gives them a whole life, and they go on to do that for other people as well. I mean, that is, is indescribable how valuable that is, not just to music, to yourself, to humanity, to everything. It is the best part of being a musician, is teaching what you do, the same way someone taught it to you. Paying that forward, sharing that back. Absolutely. That's why I'm here yapping at you all right now. Yeah. You know, it's, that's what it's about. You know? So, yeah. So, yes, teaching. And not just teaching how to play the guitar. You can't just do that. You know, if you want to be a guitarist, that's fine. But you want to be a musician. That means that you got to know how to write songs. You have to know how to arrange songs. You have to know... What goes into what every single piece of, of you know, gear in that machine does to make that machine function. You have to understand it. Uh, you have to be able to help it and support it when someone else is doing it as well and know how to interact and connect it and complement. You gotta know that stuff. You gotta know what a drummer needs to do behind the kit. You gotta get behind the kit. Even if you stink at it, you gotta know what it is. You know, every, every doctor needs to be a patient. Um, you need to know how to record. You need to know how to get sounds. You need to know how to deliver sounds to people's ears. You need to know what things do. You need to really know what the attack and release do on a compressor. Uh, and that just nods like, I think that sounds okay. No, no, you need to know exactly. You need to be visualizing a peak and a transient and a decay and, and a shape and know what's happening to it as you're messing with it and why you're doing what you're doing and how, you know, why it's necessary, why you have to do what you're doing to make it work in conjunction with all the other sounds that are eating away at that shape. Uh, you need to know how to register your songs with your performing rights organization and how to copyright it. And you need to know uh, Everything down to you know, what a cease and desist letter looks like in case you ever have to send one to somebody. Um, you need to know 
how to design artwork for your album because your artist, then you have a deadline, he's supposed to get it to you, and then suddenly he flakes out. My computer died and I can't finish it. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm moving to Australia tomorrow. Oh, I, you know, it's like, but the album's supposed to be done. Sorry, man. No, you need to be able to do all that stuff. Your life is going to consist of fixing other people's mistakes. So you need to be very good at it. Um, what else? You need to know how to uh, put your songs online, you know, whether you're using TuneCore or Topspin or CD Baby or some other aggregator that's putting your stuff out there for you. Uh, you need to know how to edit a video. You need to know, uh, what else? A camera. You need to know what an f-stop and an aperture and all that stuff does and the shutter speed. Uh, Trust me, you'll be glad you know that stuff because it will come into play at some point. You know, when you can't figure out how, it's like, all right, now what I want you to do is, I want it to be like, you know, he's back here and I'm over here and I'm singing and then suddenly I go blurry and you see just his face. I'll uh, do that on an iPhone. All right, what you need to do is you need to open up the f-stop to like 2.8 so that it's a very open thing and focus and then as you turn, turn it from here to here, that little white dot that I'm putting on the camera. Whoa! You're gonna have to be smarter than everybody else in your life. Because you're gonna depend on them and they are gonna mess up and you're gonna have to fix it. So you're gonna know how to do every single thing there is to do. Uh, you're gonna have to, trust me, by the time you're done with all this stuff, you are gonna know the three letter code to every airport on the planet. Because you gotta figure out how to get from, from, Either UWR or JFK to BAH, and then stop off in either LAC or P O. What the hell was Paphos and Cyprus? I forget. But then from there, you got to get to P N Q via B O M, <laughs> and that's how you get to Pune, India, from Cyprus via Bahrain. Um, you're going to need to know this stuff because people are going to screw it up. Um, all of this stuff is a 95 percent that allows that other 5% of where you actually get to show up somewhere and play. So it's very important to have that down. You need to know how everything works and you need to get good at it. You're going to need to be a booking agent because your booking agent is going to screw up royally. You're going to need to know how to write a performance agreement. You're going to need to know how to do everything there is to do that makes this world function or it's going to eat you up. So. When I'm not playing guitar, I'm doing that stuff. <laughs> I have a question, yeah. For real. I have a Sorry. question just, um, just to expand, just within the music. Sometimes I get the, I get the feeling that um, a jazz guy is interested in virtuosity because his star is either Charlie Parker or George Benson or he needs to the shop. So he gets into that, you know, trying to be virtuoso and he, he'll have to get all that stuff together. Sometimes a classical musician needs to get it because uh, the, 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 the repertoire demands a journey and, and uh, a list and, and, uh, and all that stuff. And then sometimes a, a pop guy would say, oh, all I want to do is sound like John Mayer. But when I listen to you play, or and when I listen to you talk, it seems like all that stuff is in the process, is basically you collect all the stuff to be able to be a rock player. So classical, jazz, and uh, all, all kinds of excellence in your presentation go into be a rock rocker, and it's not that this is, is sort of this level and those guys are that level. All that stuff is your material. All that stuff is your oyster, basically. We are manipulators of sound waves. We take waves and we, we dress them up in funny clothes. That's all we do. Um, what is rock? What is this? What is that? You know. It's all the same thing, it's all just sound waves, but we're just giving them an attitude and a style. So all you really need to do is you need to tap into that side of yourself. Basically, all the styles of music in the entire universe that ever existed are in you. And all you have to do is just pull one of them out of the closet and put that on. So that's, that's all it is. I mean, there's no difference, there's no such thing as, I can't play this style. That, that, that's a load of crap. That means that you're just, you're, you're not trying. You know, you're, you're, you're staying in your comfort zone and you're being nice and safe. 
and you're not going to grow that way. You know, you're just going to be one tiny little thing, and you're capable of so much more, and you already have it there. You're just not, you're just not doing it. So, you know, there is very little difference between, you know. tension to them to give it that authenticity of, of just, you know, just being heavy-handed and not gentle. That. Uh, there is no difference. Um... thing is style. You just simply, you have this endless rack of clothes in your closet, and all you got to do is say, I feel like putting on this one today. And you pick up your guitar, and that's what you do. And it's all there. It's all there. Uh, there's no such thing as, you know, style doesn't really exist. <laughs> you know, it's just, just keep in mind that style is just, you know, one thing on on one hanger in a whole closet full of stuff that's all yours. And all it is is just to say, I'm in this mood right now. It's like ladies saying, I'm going to put on smoky eyes today. Or, I'm going to, you know, that's honestly, that's what it is. That's all it is. It's like, I'm in this mood, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do it like this. And you're just doing that with this. So, yeah. So when you think of it like that, there's, you know, you're always going to have the things that were the inspiration to you that, that you love, that you grew up on, that's in your DNA, it's not coming out, it's always going to be the foundation of what you do that's going to be the most real. But you can do anything. Uh, let me think, in the past year, uh, what have I done? Uh, I've done like heavy metal orchestra music for a uh, horror movie. I've done uh, <coughs> mixing for a hip hop album, and then another one for a rap metal album, and then I did this clean guitar solo that's supposed to have this total spaced Pink Floyd kind of feel to it uh, for this young progressive band that Mike Portnoy uh, produced. And I mean, like just a million different things. All you do is just put on that hat. And just, and you just go into that mode. And just leave the space. You know, that's something completely different than what I just played in that, that song with the back. You know, and it's all just put on a different outfit. Say, I'm going to wear this jacket. But it's all you. It's all a piece of you and it's all your stuff. Whatever you do is you. Uh, so do it. <laughs> yeah. Do you have some uh, direction or vision about like the player that you want to be in 15 or 20 years? Where are you going? I'm just going to keep sort of The way it. I see it is that music is all inclusive, and I'm not going to narrow it down to one thing. It's like I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to keep doing everything that I'm doing. I'm Producing to all kinds of people, doing all kinds of stuff, and, and collaborating with different people, and putting out my own music, and wherever that goes, however that changes, whether it becomes heavier, or more melodic, or more progressive, more Zappa-ish, or more Bee Gees, whatever it's going to be, um, or a combination of all of it. Uh, yeah, just as long as it's authentic, and I'm not trying to do something, and I'm just letting it be what it is, and letting it happen. That's the whole thing. You have to don't try. Try and gets in the way. It's like think of it as this tunnel with just you know a flow of air going through it. Just and anything you do in there is just getting in the way of that flow. You know, it's like if you try to do something, if you try to harness the air, all you're doing is creating resistance to something that should be flowing naturally. 
You just gotta get out of your own way and just see where it goes and you'll be surprised that it'll take you to the right place if you just don't try. You don't know better than that other part of you that, that's really in touch, that's not thinking. So yeah, get out of your own way. <laughs> What else? Does that leave you all silently pondering? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, with all that stuff, like what I was playing before about playing multiple parts at once while singing and all that, that's the airflow. If you try and do it, you're just getting in the way. Uh, you just have to let it happen. You know, you're not thinking, you're not thinking about tapping your foot right now, you know, you're just doing it. Uh, you're not thinking about smiling and moving your neck. You're not thinking about moving this hand while you're nodding and you're still breathing. Uh, you know, that's all happening without you having to try and make it happen. If you try to make all that happen, it's not going to happen. So, all that stuff is the natural stuff. And if you delegate it to some other part of your brain, that just call it the natural part of your brain. You know, it's in the back. This is the part that's trying to control everything. This is the part that just lets it happen. You just have to push everything to the back and say, you take care of it. And then think about other things. Think about what you're feeling uh, and how it all comes out, what your fingers do, and all that knowledge and all that practice over these years. This part of it's going to take care of that. You don't got to think about it. It will happen if you just get the hell out of its way. Yeah. What else you got? But you, you talk about just letting it happen, but to just let it happen, you do have to develop a certain set, a set of skills and technique to be able to do it, right? Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, that, that's the whole weird thing about it, is that it's, it's, it is kind of a contradiction. Like, you have to learn it. Like, you, I'm sure you've heard it all the time. Learn, and then forget everything you learned. You know, that thing. That's what they're talking about. You've heard that before. You know, it's like, learn all the stuff, and then forget it. That means, you know, once you, you learn it, put it back here and just let it happen. Because you don't ever really forget it. You don't forget it. You just don't have to try and access it. You know, it'll be part of, you know, you learned how to walk, but now you, now you just forget it. You just walk. You don't have to think about it. It's the same kind of thing. And that's when something becomes natural. You know, it's the same way walking is natural. Uh, if you suddenly decide, all right, I'm going to really focus on how I'm walking right now, you can start walking for me. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that, that's the whole thing. It seems like a contradiction. Learn how to do it once you have it, once you know how to do it, forget about it. And it sort of develops on its own. Yeah. Do you sometimes have to, uh, like, while you're playing, tap back into what you, what you already know, which is what we're talking about. And, you know, it's like, hey, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm beside myself. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying, I'm trying to show this off. And then you say, what the hell am I doing? It? Yeah, you have to give yourself an, you have to slap yourself in the face from the inside. Mm -hmm. like, Stop thinking. Yeah. You're thinking too much. Stop. Okay. Yeah. And you've probably done that. Like, you're playing this song, you just got to, like, shake your head, like, damn. You know, it's like, I'm starting to, like, think too much. So yeah, yeah, definitely that, that will always happen. For me, my problem is I just start thinking, but not about music, I start thinking about other things. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I just, you know, I'll be, I'll be playing, and then I just, like while I was doing that song, I saw actually that happened. I was playing the song, and I'm sitting there, and I'm going, you know, doing all this stuff, and while that's going on, I start thinking to myself, what time is that flight on Sunday? It's like 8 o'clock, so then I gotta get about 4 in the morning, and I have to get up, and it's like, oh, wait, I'm playing a song, I need to stop thinking about that. <laughs> that kind of thing. So, that's what I, yeah, so try not to think. You know, you have to sort of just zone out and just let everything, just let that, just be the wind tunnel, you know? I'm very good at being a wind tunnel, right? <laughs> Can you speak about uh, for your experience in the music industry? Um, what it's like, or what what being on time, being there, has to do with it all, and, and sort of you know, like let's say somebody calls you and you're not sure how important it is, you know it's important to them. Uh, you know, do you see people uh, that are nonchalant about commitment, 
succeed in the music industry because I had a um, comment today from one of our better musicians and said, oh, I don't like showing up to those rehearsals because there's no energy there. But, and then so, so half of the time, he's not shit showing up. So I'm sure the other people in the ensemble would say, well, uh, it, it's not happening because this guy is not showing up. So what, can, can you give us some, some insight what in your experience in the real music industry? What is, is it like? Can you afford to be nonchalant about showing up? Well, you could do that, but people aren't going to keep working with you. There's always somebody else. There's always someone else that, that someone can work with. It doesn't matter how good you are or what you do, there's someone else just as good. And if they're more pleasant to have in other people's lives, they're going to be in other people's lives and not you. Uh, that goes for anything in life. Um, number one, be on time. We can get into a whole conversation about that. Uh, the show must go on time. The show must go on time. It's not the show must go on. The show must go on time. That's the real saying. Everybody's time is valuable. If you want to really disrespect someone and just flat out say, you're nothing to me, you're a piece of crap, and I don't care whether you live or die or anything that's important to you, I don't give a shit, you're nothing. Be late. You're, that's what you're saying to them. And that's how you're making them feel. So if that's what you want to, you know, you might as well just say those words if you're going to make them wait when they have changed their life for that moment to include you and you think that their life doesn't matter. So what is it? Being on time means you get there early and you wait. You get there a half hour early, you get there 10 minutes early, it doesn't matter what it is, but you make sure you're there and then you wait and you stare at your watch and you wait until it's about 10 minutes before you got to walk in there and then you let the guy know so that he's not worried, and you say, Hey, I'm here, let me know when it's cool to come on in. And then he'll say, Yeah, anytime. Or, or he'll say, uh, Give me like another 15 minutes, whatever it is, but you wait, not them. They called you, it's on you to be there on time, and you show up early, and you wait, you make sure that you walk in when they need you, and you be ready. So that's number one. Uh, if you're not going to do that, then you're going to have a very short-lived, uh, very small circle of people that want anything to do with you. And that's what you've earned. So if you want something more than that, be on time. That's, that's number one. Because it's not just about the clock. It's about, it's a whole big message you're sending to people about yourself and what you think of them. And they ain't going to like it. So... Be on time. Absolutely. Some people have a problem with that. Fix the problem. It's your problem. It's your life. Figure it out and fix it. If you have to get up five hours early to be ten minutes earlier than where you need to be rather than ten minutes late, you do it. That's simple. Whatever it takes. Uh, so that's number one. Be on time. I can tell you lots of stories about not being on time uh, doing shows and the amount of trickle-down effect of problems it created for tens of thousands of people by not being on time. And they never forgive. So be on time. So that's one. What else can I tell you? Uh, don't be one of those bare minimum passing grade people that's just, all right, I just need to know it well enough. Oh wait, wait, they hired me to play on this song? Okay, I'm going to listen to it the night before and think that that's going to be okay. No, you live it, you make sure it's in your blood, you make sure that you know it so much that you hate it, and then you make sure you get down everybody else's parts. So this way when they don't show up and everybody's screwed, you can keep it going and, and not necessarily be the hero, but just keep everything from falling to falling apart. You know, for everybody's sake. To that. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, being a musician is being a soldier, and there are no sick days at war. Uh, it doesn't matter how sick you are, it doesn't matter what bone is broken, it doesn't matter your car accident, you get the hell on stage and you do what you have to do unless you're going to die. And even then, you may even choose risking death. Uh, because if you don't think that way, then you're not a real musician. There's something wrong with us. There's something very wrong with us because we think that way, as if 
it is the most important thing on earth and that the world is going to crumble and that's the end of it if the show doesn't go on. And uh, whether that's right or wrong, uh, that's just the way we think as musicians. And if you don't think that way, then you're not a musician. You're something else. You, you're a guitar owner, not a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and I can tell you lots of stories about that. I can tell you stories about people that peed in their pants, crapped in their pants, puked behind the amps in between songs while a three-hour show goes on and the audience never knew. Uh, you know, people with, with, you know, torn body parts that are running around the stage and the audience never knew. Uh, and then they deal with it after the fact. Uh, it's like being in the Olympics. You're going to make that leap with a broken ankle. doesn't matter. you got to, you know, that's just how it is. That's in your blood, it's in your makeup, and you will die trying before you'll say, no, I'm going to go easy on myself. We're idiots. Why do we do that? I don't know, but we do. I do it all the time. And then I get real pissed off about it, but I do it. Um, what else? So yes, the show must go on. The show must go on time. Respect people. Uh, be really grateful <laughs> that anybody does anything for you. Nobody owes you a damn thing. Nobody owes you a gig. Nobody owes you their time. Nobody owes you anything. No one owes you their attention. No one owes you any recognition. Nobody owes you anything. If you get it, be grateful. Because they could be giving it to six billion other people. And if they're giving it to you, make sure you've earned it. Make sure you appreciate it. Absolutely. It's a gift. So, so don't, you know, don't take that gift lightly. What else? What else can I tell you? Ah. What else can I tell them? I no, keep I on how, do you, how do you take care of yourself when you're doing all this? You don't. Make sure you're <laughs> <laughs> you end up touring um, with the flu for three weeks, frightened to death on how you're going to make it through that show, and taking all kinds of temporary cocktails to try and stop you from coughing so that you don't do even more damage while you're trying to sing. And then by the time you get home, you spend about a month recuperating and then you go out and do it again. Uh, and you say, I will never do this again. And then you do it again. <laughs> uh, like I said, uh, there's something wrong with us. And if, you know, there, there's something in our blood, you know, and I guess, you know, if everybody was capable of it, they'd be doing it, but they're not, and we are, and that's why we torture ourselves, because we can handle the torture. Even though it still hurts, <laughs> we can handle it. Uh, so how do you take care of yourself? There's a few things. Number one, you will never see a band eating crappy food and doing drugs and doing all that stuff. Crew will do it, the fans will do it. The band is in a corner eating vegetables and figuring out how much sleep they can possibly get to make sure that the next night they can beat the crap out of themselves for you and then do it again and have enough time to, to heal in between. That's pretty much how you spend all your time, is figuring out how much time you can get to heal after beating the crap out of yourself for people. Uh, and you love it, and you hate it, but you love it. Uh, so yeah, so me, what do I do? I eat the healthiest stuff I can eat, I get the most sleep possible. I lay my head on any flat surface, any chance I get, because it's probably the last chance I'm going to get to sleep in a long time. Um, what else? Um, if somebody coughs, you hold your breath for at least 30 seconds. <laughs> without them noticing. Um, you shake hundred hands, you make a point to not wipe your nose or rub your eyes until you wash them. Uh, because you don't want to be patient zero that infects the other 50 people that are on tour with you. Because everybody's getting sick. You know, and it starts with one person that passes it around. Um, and you don't want to be that first person. It sucks to be patient zero. Everyone is so mad at you. <laughs> You're the one that caused the tour flu for everybody. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to be that guy. So it's a lot of that. It's a lot of eating healthy, sleeping as much as you can, 
Everybody I know that plays the raunchiest music, they're in the gym, they're <coughs> jogging, they're watching what they eat, they're snacking on the little protein bars they got from home rather than stopping at McDonald's. They're doing all of that stuff and they're, they're getting as much sleep as they can because big rock and roll and all that crap is not all that, that silly, stupid, 80s hair band video nonsense. It's what you do on stage and it's the party that you give other people. You don't get the party. You're the party planner. You make the party for other people and if you're doing it right, they think you're having the party too. But when they are enjoying themselves, that is your gratification. And you will do whatever it takes to make sure that happens and you've got to make sure that you are really 200% because you need to be twice as good as what you're doing in order to do it well. So that's what you got to do. You got to eat real healthy. You need to make sure that your body can withstand the abuse that you are going to put it through. Because you will, on stage at one of those shows, step the wrong way and it seems like nothing, but for some reason it just caused a lot of ankle pain and it didn't bother you that much other than the first 10 seconds and until you went to bed at night and then woke up the next day and you can't walk and then you gotta run around the stage stomping on it. Um, yeah, definitely protect your feet. Uh, if you wanna put on a good show, you need to be able to step on your feet. You don't realize how important they are until they're not there for you. Uh, always wear very thick shoes because you don't want to step on a nail and then be hobbling around the stage for the next two months. You know, when you're supposed to be getting all your cool poses and jumping around. And you can't because one of your feet has a hole in it. <laughs> uh, so yes, protect your feet. That's what do you say to the aspiring musician that says, oh, I don't like uh, this, this guy's energy, I don't like his face, I'm supposed to be rehearsing with him, and I have the feeling that I'm a better musician than him anyway. What do you say to that? Inspiring musician. If it bothers you that much, quit. Do something else. Uh, what you should probably do, though, is develop the skill to not get pissed off so easy. <laughs> how much that will help you. So uh, Because everybody's going to piss you off if you like that. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And it's not easy to do that. Some people's voice just makes you want to choke them. Some people's face just makes you want to punch them. Some people just, the way they play, it's like, God, you suck, and I can't believe you guys played that solo. I played so much better. My grandmother was in the ground for 10 years. If I dug her up and gave her a guitar, she would play it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But don't worry about that. I mean, all you really need to worry about I guess it's, it's changing your mentality to realize that the world is not put here for you. You are a guest on this planet. It's not your world that everybody is supposed to do what you want your way. If everybody bothers you, you're probably a little bit too arrogant and self-centered. Which is kind of weird, it, it, but you've got to break it down and realize, well, if everyone's bothering me, why do they bother me? Because they're not doing what I want. Well, that means that you don't see them as their own people and you think that they should be your puppets and do things the way you want them to do and you're not accepting them as them. And you're not cool with that. Which means that you're an arrogant son of a bitch. You think that the whole world should be the way you want it to be. Well guess what? It's not going to be that way. So get used to it and learn to live with it. And if you want people to be better, start with yourself. Make yourself better. And as long as you do that, you might be a little more at peace with things. You know, instead of trying to, instead of focusing on how much this guy annoys you, and this guy annoys you, and this guy annoys you, and this guy annoys you. You know what? Maybe you annoy you. Maybe that's the real problem. You know, maybe, maybe the real problem is your reaction to everything else is, you know, because what's ultimately going on is that you feel annoyed. Well, is it them or is it your reaction to them? It's actually your reaction to them, which means that you are annoying you. So what you need to do is change yourself so that you're not annoying yourself so damn much when you look at other people. And maybe you spend a little more time doing things that make you feel better about you when you're just with you. Other people may not piss you off so much. So start with that. Start with the people you can fix yourself and do something about that. And then maybe you'll find that you're a little more at peace with the rest of the world 
and you get along with the rest of the world a little bit better, and they don't bother you so much, and they don't offend you so much. Um, obviously, you know, they're doing something okay if they're doing what they're doing, and it only seems to be pissing you off, then maybe the problem is you. So, that's one way that you may want to think about it, and you may be able to solve the problem you have with other people by fixing the problem, which is, you have a problem with other people. It's not the other people. See for what it is. You have a problem with other people. So, fix that. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> It's not easy to do, because in our essence, we are self-centered creatures. Um, it's part of what we need to survive. Otherwise, we will just end up a carcass that everybody bit off a piece of. So it's a, there's a bit of a battle to take. Otherwise, everybody else will just take, and you will have none. So it's just a little bit of, here's the food bowl, and everybody's nose is in it you got to kind of push out of the way so that you can get some, or you're going to be the one that starves. So it is in our nature to be self-centered. Um, it's ugly, it's rotten, it's dicky, but it is what helps us survive uh, in our nature. But you need to figure out in the civilized social world that we've created for ourselves how to not let that nature get in the way and to keep it in check and not become a social problem. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. And you will find that you get along with people a lot better. They keep on calling you back to gigs because they like being in the room with you because you don't get pissed off. You don't escalate the tension. You don't harp on the problems instead of just quietly finding the solution. Uh, all of that stuff. You know, everything is contagious. Uh, Bad vibes are contagious. Good vibes are contagious. Uh, having fun is contagious. Anger is contagious. All of that stuff explains. <coughs> um, bless you. That was a sneeze. <laughs> um, I thought I heard a sneeze. So, so yeah, if you're gonna be a contagious creature, as we all are, at least be one of the good things that that kind of help the situation that you're in. It's not all about playing guitar or making music or what you do. It's about people wanting to do something together. And if you want them to do it with you, uh, you have to kind of fix yourself so that ultimately you end up being someone that people want to do something with. Uh, and it can't be for those sort of selfish motives. You have to do it because you want to, because you want to be a better person for you. And then just see what comes to you from that, if anything. But if not, at least you become a better person for you. And you're a better member of humanity. At least you can say that much. That humanity is not a shittier thing because of you. It's a better thing. And that has value. It's not all about what you get from it. It's about, you know, we are all these connected little dots that create this entire group of humanity. And by being a better person, you are making humanity better, you know, by one little dot. And that's actually how you make humanity better. That's how you fix everything in the world, is by every one of those dots saying, I'm going to be better. And then all of it is better. But all you could do is just take on the one dot and fix that. That's everybody's homework. Be a better dot. <laughs> <laughs> Fix your dot. And suddenly you got 50 people that have just made humanity better. You know, 50 of X amount, billions. Uh, that's how it works. So yeah, you know, we can all, all look at the big mountain that, that we have to move. You know, the ozone layer, there's too much garbage, we got no drinking water, there's starving people, there's war, there's this, there's that. Fix your shit. Everybody do that, and that's how it gets fixed. Yeah. And it starts with being on time to your gig. <laughs> yes. Good. What else you got? Anything else, or am I just going? You know, I can just keep on talking and talking and talking. But this is really the stuff that matters. Um, 
you know, of course, you know, what you do with this is a given. But if people are going to, well, if they're going to include you in humanity, in society, in everything that they're doing, and not banish you, um, you got to fix that down. I have a question. Have you ever encountered a point in your playing that you feel like you're hitting a wall? Like, yeah, like the what rut. Do you do, you know, what do you do from that? Oh, like when you get into a rut where it's like, I keep playing the same pentatonic pattern. Yeah. That thing? No, no more yeah. like you, you, you need to find something to improve on, but you can't, you can't actually break out from that plateau, I would say. Yeah, the rut, we call it. Are you team? I'm stuck in a rut. Um, I think what happens with that, when people get stuck in the rut, the problem is they think that they need, it's like, it's like a box. It's like, I'm stuck in this box, and I can't get out of this box. You know, what they end up doing is they try and find another box to jump into. Instead, what you need to do is you need to just slowly start pushing on the edges of the box until it expands a little bit. So, here's a simple example of that. I'm stuck in a box, help! screwdriver and your set of screwdrivers in, in you know toolbox back then. That's it. So, yeah. so that that's one example of that. And it's not to be overly literal. Just think of it, whatever situation you're in, if you feel like you're in the box, you know, try and get out of the box, try and stretch the box. So that you have more room in it. And the more you do that eventually it doesn't feel like it's not a box anymore. What else you got? If, uh, if, the wanted, if the school wanted to give uh, guitar players sort of a benchmark to read.